My name is Juliana Nicolasian with the Oklahoma State University Library. Today is Tuesday, August 16th, 2011, and I'm in Ardmore, Oklahoma, interviewing Helen Heron Thompson. This interview is being conducted as part of the inductees of the Oklahoma Women's Hall of Fame Oral History Project. Helen was inducted into the Oklahoma Women's Hall of Fame in 2011. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate you being here. Well, let's begin by learning a little bit more about you. Could you tell us a little bit about where you grew up and give us some background into your early life? Okay. I grew up, I was born in Oklahoma City, Apollo Clinic Hospital, but it's no longer there. I think it was on like 10th Street. But anyway, uh, Oklahoma City, I uh, grew up in, on uh, 34th and Walker, which is now the Edgemere Historical District. Uh, went to Edgemere School, lived there all my life. Went to Edgemere School, Harding, junior high. At that time, Harding was a junior high. And then uh, Northeast High School. Loved it, loved it all. And uh, of course, at that time we walked, you know, he walked to school. Uh, the schools were like three blocks, except for Northeast, and then we drove to Northeast. But uh, I, uh, I really enjoyed school. I think, uh, I was in thinking about, I think when I went to Northeast, when reached high school age, we where we lived was on the dividing line, so you could go to Classen, Central, or Northeast. And of course, Capitol Hill was way south there. There were only four high schools. And uh, the uh, Northeast was a smaller school. And my dad determined that's where we all needed to go. I uh, had, a, had an older sister who was eight years older, so she, I think she was one of the first classes at Northeast High School. And then my brother was four years later and he went, and of course, baby sister went too, so uh, loved it. Um, and I think uh, going to Northeast really was a big change in my life because it was smaller, and I guess that's kind of where I got my foothold and blossomed as, you know, interacting with people and so forth. Well, what were some of your favorite subjects in school? Um, I was thinking about that. Well, home ec and choir, I guess. I was in choir and uh, took some language. It didn't take, but I did take uh, French in school and like that. But uh, a home ec really was kind of followed through and, and became what I majored in when I went to college. So I kind of enjoyed it. Uh, so, um, and uh, you were you were asking, or one of the questions they asked was, you know, what we did for fun as children. Of course, it's hard for my children to realize that we had no TV. You know, there was no TV. You were outside. You played. You interacted with other kids, which I think we have lost. There's that's been lost today, and it, that's a shame. Uh, but all of our activity was with neighbor kids. We were always with friends and doing something outside in the evening. It was kick the can or what, or something like that. But riding our bikes. But it was always, you were always busy. You were outside and uh, swinging in the back, you know, something like that. But uh, it, it was a whole different deal than it is now, you know. Where it seems that there was so much more we neighbored, and we don't neighbor now, you know, you don't sit on the porch and talk to your neighbors. So, anyway, uh, and of course without air conditioning, we didn't have air conditioning in the evenings, you were always outside on the porch. So, anyway, it was, it was a great time, a great time to grow up. Well, tell me a little bit about your parents. Uh, well, my mom and dad, uh, my mom was for, uh, she was from Arkansas, I mean, she was from Tennessee. My dad was from Arkansas. And they were both school teachers, and they met in Osceola, Arkansas. He was the principal, and she was uh, one of the teachers. And uh, then they came in a wagon to Oklahoma, where he went in with his brother in the law. He, he went worked his way through the University of Arkansas, and uh, a lot of hard work. And uh, 
then came to Oklahoma City as an attorney, and he was an attorney in Oklahoma City. Till, actually, uh, till the day he died, he, that evening he came home and went upstairs to, you know, change clothes for the evening and uh, died of a heart attack. Uh, he had a great work ethic. My folks were both uh, very supportive. I mean, our family, my life was my family. Uh, everything, the family was first. You did, um, if there was going to be something at the house, we, you know, you were there. <laughs> there weren't, uh, you know, there were guidelines, and yet uh, you didn't feel like they were real strict. You know, but you knew you were there. <laughs> we had dinner every night at 5.30 and you were at the table. You didn't, everyone ate together at dinner. We were all together at dinner and uh, breakfast and dinner, really. So there was a, we had a very strong family ties. My, my dad, like I say, my dad was an attorney. My mom had been a, a teacher, but, uh, and she went to Randolph-Macon. And of course, in that day, that was really something to go away to, uh, you know, Virginia, she, but she was in Tennessee. But our family was always very, um, education has always been very important in my family. My dad always said, they can't, there are two things they can't take away from you. One is your name, if you have a good name, they can't take that away from you. And the other is education. You know, you've got that, and you, that's something you need to do for yourself. And uh, we, uh, but, you know, we were, we pretty had, uh, there was flexibility, but at the same time, like a church, we, our family was based, we were at church every time the door opened. It was a cross town in Oklahoma City. I don't know if you're familiar with Oklahoma City, but it was, it was near the old class and high school building, it's uh, Epworth Methodist. And both of my folks were, you know, either in uh, the uh, guild women's uh, circle. My dad was chairman of the board for years and years. And, you know, the church was our deal, and we had our pew and the whole thing, and we we were always there. Uh, but, uh, and sometimes, of course, you just say, oh, I don't want to go. But as you look back, it made a difference. I think it really made a difference uh, because, um, well, I have a thing up in my at home, and it says there's two things we can give our children, and one is roots, and the other's wings. And they gave me the wing, roots, and it was a little harder for them to give me the wings, but they did that. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, it's. Uh, I just think that it's so critical, you know. Anyway. <laughs> How many brothers and sisters did you have? I have a brother and a sister. And my sister was eight years older. My brother was four years older. And my da dad figured that out because he said he only wanted one at the university at the same time. And now, of course, he <laughs> he'd, be, he'd be more set on that. But he was very systematic in everything. And that was way above my, and so I was the youngest of the family. And, uh, but we were still very close, you know, and I'm still, my sister is now deceased, but uh, my brother lives in Edmond, and we're in touch, and he's, he's my rock, you know. I really count on him for a lot of things. So, um, Well, as you're, you're growing up and you're going to school, did you have any idea of what you wanted to be when you got older? The only thing I want, you know, at that time, people, women, weren't really looking at professions. You know, I mean, I don't, I mean, you know, I thought home ec would be nice and so on, but I mean, as far as a profession, uh, most women were secretaries or, you know, there weren't many women in professional jobs, really. Um, that was groundbreaking, but uh, a wife and a mother. That was, you know, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to have a family and and uh, try and replicate what I grew up with. And uh, so that, I think that was, I never, at that time, never, I don't think I ever thought about a career, 
you know. Um, and, and then when I, of course, when I went to college, uh, I went to, um, I went to Mary Baldwin my first year. Mary Baldwin is in Stanton, Virginia. It's a long way from home. Yeah, long way from home, and it was the first one in the home that ever, in our family, had ever done anything like that. I was a little bit of a rebel, you know, as far as I wanted to go try. And so, I did, wasn't until later that I realized, probably what I, it was financially pretty <laughs> strapped, you know, but no, I went and uh, loved it. I was there a year, and then, uh, went to OU. Of course, I was just in liberal arts at, at uh, Mary Baldwin basic class. And it was a girl's school. At that time, every you know, every school in, in Virginia was either a boy's school or a girl's school. Even the university was a boy's school. They had no, uh, I mean, separate. Uh, and while I was there, I think I, uh, developed a love for travel that I still have. I was close enough to go. We went into uh, Washington, D.C., went over to Williamsburg, went to New York City for a weekend. And so I have a real love for travel, and I've traveled, you know, ever since. But we, when we went to uh, Mary Baldwin, we went on the train, and we went to St. Louis, and it was overnight, and then you changed trains and went over. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> they had they had cars set aside for students going back to school uh, wow. in Virginia. There were a lot of, lot from our part of the country that went back to school, and so they had two cars. One, of course, for boys and one for girls. You know, the, there's another thing, this cohabitation that we have now. But anyway, why, it was. Why did you decide to come back to Oklahoma? I th I loved it there. It was beautiful country, nice people, and but. They're again getting back to family. I thought, I'm going to find someone here, and it's going to be too far from home, mm -hmm. and I want to be back home. You know, I, th I think that was the big thing. The girl I went with, um, her name was Mary Ann Hine. She was also from Oklahoma City, but uh, she didn't go. wasn't going back the next year. She, after junior high or in junior high, she and her family moved to Dallas. And we kept in touch, and right before we went to school, she called me, I guess, in August, and said, where are you going to school? I said, well, I'm gonna go to OU, you know. And she said, well, I'm going to Mary Baldwin. Why don't you come go? And so anyway, uh, but she wasn't gonna be there. And plus, I think the family, uh, that connection. Because, you know, if you're up there and you're dating people up there, there the possibility of, of finding someone there is so great. Sure. So anyway, came back, went to OU. My sister had been a Delta Gamma. I was a Delta Gamma at OU. And, and I was in the home ec. Of course, they don't have a home ec department at OU now. And uh, uh, went into um, a home, de I became a home demonstration agent. Did not, you? Not, not an agent, a home, uh, home service consultant is what they call it, home service consultant and uh, worked for og and &E. and we went out into homes. I mean, it was in the home ec line. The food, uh -huh. foods were more my thing than cl clothing. I mean, the clothing, it didn't get done in time. I didn't like to do that last putting the hem in and stuff. You know, I want it done now and move right on down. The, I want immediate, you know. Uh, but working as a home service consultant was just great, and we, uh, did the demonstrations, went into the schools, and... Uh, what yeah. were you demonstrating? Well, at that time, <laughs> see, I've, I'm sound 100, I understand. <laughs> there were, uh, there, people didn't use electric ranges. Electric ranges were new. And so anytime uh, they were promoting that, and the electric company was too, of course. So anytime someone put in and uh, bought an electric range in town, I would go out their home and go over how to use it and so forth. And that's what I did and with my hat and gloves on because you had to wear hat and gloves. So that's, that was part of the deal. But I, uh, I was in Shawnee for three years, I guess, as a home service consultant. And, and then we went also like to schools if, uh, to show students 
and you know we did and I'm, I'm sure you've been to some food demonstrations but uh, I see them on TV now and we you know that's what I did I mean you had your trays set up before the thing and then you made it look so easy but you'd spend a day getting all that stuff together but anyway uh, we went in the schools and went to um, the home ec you know and some days uh, well, I went all over this area, and I'm, uh, say I'd go to Davis, uh, go to the school, and I might be do uh, a demonstration for every class that day, back to back, <coughs> of, and you'd do a, <coughs> it'd depend what they wanted, but usually it was on the electric range, and so we did a full meal on the electric range, using the oven and the broiler and the, you know, and then it all comes out at the same time, you know, so, but uh, I, I did a lot of traveling then. I uh, went to my area, the, when, well, in Shawnee, I had my main office and worked Shawnee and went out uh, around there, Seminole, we woke all down in there, um, and Chandler. But when I married, when, with, uh, at that time, and with old Jenny, if you married, you could only work two more years. See, women weren't encouraged to be in profession, really, you know. So you had two years. If you married, you were, well, of course, that meant there was quite a turnover in our group, you know. So when I married, then I moved to Ardmore, and they transferred me down here, but I could just work two years. And the woman that was here had been here and I think felt very threatened by the fact that I came in. Mm -hmm. So they ended up giving her Ardmore because, and then I took the towns, I drove. I, I drove to Paul's Valley, Wannywood, I went to Durant. I went out as far as Bochita. Uh, and, and sometimes when we went to Wapanaka, uh, uh, Bow Legs, uh, we, you know, and they would, they didn't have, they weren't set up for, <laughs> you know, I talk about it, things, God, you're from the darky, but they weren't set up for electric ranges, you know, it takes 220. So I remember in, uh, um, I guess it was, it might have been, no, it wasn't Wapana, well, anyway, one of the towns down there, that the men, the linemen came out, we got a range out there, they hauled a range from town, put it in this, they didn't have 220 in this home ec room. And they put it on this stage, they wired it in, 220 from the pole. He stayed there by the pole till I was through demonstrating, then they undid it and took it away. <laughs> but it was, it was new, see, it was really, and um, it was exciting. With, uh, also when you worked then, if I, if you, you had two years, but if you became pregnant, you were gone. Mm -hmm. You know, you didn't work pregnant, so. Uh, people, you know, I've had friends that you know, always poo-pooed women's lib, and I said, let me tell you, you didn't live it. Because, you know, for, for someone that really, now, I didn't have to, I mean, you know, well, after you get married, but uh, women, the man was the head of the house, so women didn't have that much. Um, they just weren't thought of as regular workers like they are now. Uh, women now don't realize how much they, how far it's come, but even uh, you know teachers, and I think in some cases that still happened, where if it's uh, the, if the man's the head of the house, he got more, and the woman in the next room teaching the same thing got less. So anyway, didn't mean to get into all that. <laughs> that I'm putting my political hat on. Okay. Well, uh, tell me how you met your husband. Okay. Uh, I met uh, Jack at Lake Murray, and uh, we were some friends and I had come down from Shawnee and uh, uh, just down having fun and met. Uh, I, and there was another person from OU here. That's where I met him. And then uh, we dated, I guess, about a year and a half. And then uh, Mar I'm married and I moved to Ardmore then. Ardmore's a kind of a long way from Oklahoma City. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, it was, um, you know, it was great. And there, his, uh, of course, we were now, and we divorced then later, but uh, his family, we all just meshed. And uh, 
his family became my family, and my family became their. I mean, we we all just became very close, so it worked out just great. Yeah, and uh, and another thing, I was thinking about uh, one of this uh, can, uh, role models that you looked up to, and uh, of course I mentioned my parents, and then there was a uh, youth minister at the first at our church that was called Pop Porter, and I don't know what his first name was. He's gone, of course, an older man, but uh, he he was a he was excellent at making everybody feel valuable and really promoting you know helping you overcome any insecurities you had and so forth so he did a lot for me but uh but of course you know my folks they were always there and uh i uh, and i thought about um uh, also, you know, deciding to go into, you know, I, it says in here something about what did, what made you decide to go into home maker. Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, uh, besides, I love to cook with my mom. I had an aunt, Aunt Mary, Mary Dank, that was my mom's maiden name, and she was with uh, Kraft Foods. And she developed cheese as a food. Prior to her going there, they never, they never sold it. I mean, it was just like eggs, milk and eggs and cheese. But not telling you what to do with it or, you know. And she worked for Kraft Foods and developed their whole department of, of uh, promoting. Uh, she wrote their first book out of their Kraft book cookbook and uh, a very glamorous life and she would come down you know and of course she would fly in to come to see us and you know you just saw the jewelry and looked wonderful and uh, and I did go up once when I was at Mary Baldwin went up to see the craft place to see it and it was elegant you know she'd built this whole she had built the, their whole promoting it and then whenever they did pictures they used her hands to do the, you know, fixing the food and so forth. But then I thought later, I was reflecting on that today, how glamorous her life looked and everything. But uh, how much she really missed as far as family and what my mom had. Mm -hmm. You know, it's uh, at a distance it looks, oh, this fabulous. But we, mom, we had such, so much more you know in the long run but she it was kind of glamorous and I thought oh that'd be fabulous and that's kind of the demonstrating things so it's kind of what and you see that on TV today all these cooks that are doing the demo that was kind of the I thought that was, looked nice fun to do but anyway did you have any uh, special meals you like to cook with your mom oh what well, we we cooked we did a lot of uh, Oh, what I don't know any particular meal. I was always in the kitchen, and I think developed pumpkin bread was something I gave fixed and gave to people. That was a big deal, and I still do that. But Mom always uh, she did can a lot of canning, and I still do. I have her recipe for for bread and butter pickles, and I do bread and butter pickles and chow chow and sweet pickles still. In fact, I, after she passed away, I broke, got her little grinder. Well, that is work. <laughs> the grinder's work. I now have an electric one. But, uh, no, I, I just enjoyed, and I, I guess enjoyed when people, you know, people are very uh, complimentary of something. You know, you know, you fix, if you fix something. And even now at Christmas, uh, for friends and so forth, I, I cook rather than buy, you know. I, I mean, for family and all, of course, I buy. But I mean, people don't do that anymore. They don't have. They don't do homemade stuff, mm -hmm. and so it seems a little more special than going out and buying something. So I still do that. I take it you had a garden growing up. A what? A garden. We might have had a few things, not much. My dad was raised on a farm. Okay. 
And he, as soon as I get away from there, I'm not lifting a hole again because he worked the cotton fields. I mean, he had a very uh, sparse, I mean, he, he was one of those that walked five miles to school. And uh, his mom and dad died when he was, his mother died of childbirth and his dad had died before that. So his older brothers raised him. Wow. And so, and working out, I mean, he wanted, his whole ambition was to get out of that. So we didn't, no, we didn't do much gardening. Now he, uh, he was an attorney and many people paid him in vegetables and stuff. Because at that time, uh, this was, you know, right after, well, I was born, you know, right after Depression times. But a lot of people, that's uh, paid their bills. And every once in a while, we'd have a couple of chickens in the backyard. And when we lived in Oklahoma City, you know, that was, yeah, we had, uh, but, um, and I remember driving out sometimes to collect and uh, collect some of his, uh, and they, uh, you know, they might, like I say, they might pay him in eggs or something like that. But, uh, but growing up also, uh, we were, uh, uh, right, well, when I was like maybe eight or so, not ten, it was right during the war. World War Two in the uh, 40s. Rationing. Yeah, the rationing. We had the rationing, and I remember taking the uh, uh, taking a little wagon and collecting grease for the war effort, and then you take it down and sell it or give it to them. Or, well, I don't remember. I just remember my wagon with all these cans of dirty grease, you know. <laughs> but and then of course we did the. Oh yeah, we had the rationing of shoes and the whole thing and we all loved it and you know we went every week we we did uh, bought war stamps we took our pennies to school and bought stamps got a book and then got a war bond and all that so but those were good times and it seems like there was more togetherness you know of people really caring and uh, and I remember walking uh, 34th and Walker well that was three blocks from Main Street you know, if you, if you went from my house. And I remember a, a friend of mine and I, probably we were in maybe junior high, because I don't think high school we would have wanted a car, you know. We would, but we walked all the way down there on a Saturday. We'd walk down and go to the movie and then turn around and walk home. Didn't think a thing about it. And, you know, now your kids, your car, they're, they have to know where they are because it's so, it's unfortunate. And that they've lost some of that, but that all goes <laughs> different times. Yes, that's right. Uh, well, you were you were telling me about working for OG and E, uh -huh. moving to Ardmore. Yeah, you had two years. What you had two years after you got married to continue your yeah, employment, uh -huh. and then we started raising a family. All right. So, uh -huh. how many kids did you have? I have two sons, uh, John and James. Uh, John's oldest, and he has, uh, and he he went to OU. They both went to OU. Um, he has five children. He has the blended family, his and hers and theirs. You know, he has one twenty-one at OU and one that's four. So he has a handful. James has two girls, and one is at OSU and one's at Plainview. So. Uh, I try and make every, we, we still do a lot of family. Uh, uh, I remember my folks when they stress the fact, always get the family together. You know, we used to always get together at Christmas and Thanksgiving. Now we, we're down to Thanksgiving, but we, the Oklahoma City family last year at Lake Murray, we had, I think there were 50 of us with my group from the city. And then my little daughter-in-law, Kim, uh, her folks live in uh, Carnegie, so they came over and we were down in Lake Murray. But uh, it, it's still important. Then this week we'll be celebrating. We try and just the group here, and we don't do that. But, you know, on birthdays we always still get together and do the whole thing, the singing and the stuff. And 
Fourth of July is, um, we have a tradition of meeting at, we meet at my house at 6.30 in the morning and we raise the flag. And my, James, my one son, I guess he remembered it from high school, recites the preamble to the Constitution. We salute the flag. And then we go out and cook out. We cook breakfast out. We used to go to Pecan Grove out at Lake Murray. And uh, then this last, we've gone out to uh, Regional Park. But we cook, you know, do all the stuff you're not supposed to have, you know hash browns and gravy and sausage and you know all that all that good stuff but we still do the family you know i think we had 25 this but uh, we have some that don't like to get up you understand (laughs) so they don't come to that but uh, we still try and keep at least those times for family and get everybody together well when you're you're raising your sons did you work much out of the home no I was home. I, no, I did not work after I moved here and went with old Jenny. In fact, they did call me, I remember them calling me back when John was maybe two or something, toddler. And uh, he called me back and see if I wanted to come back to work. And I said, no, I said, he just threw his diaper in the toilet and, and I was naming some other things he'd done and I said, I don't want to miss one bit of it. Well, you know, I want to be here. And so, no, I didn't, I didn't uh, go back to work until I divorced. And then, you know, that's a whole, whole different deal, yeah. Well, tell me about your, take me through your career post-divorce. Okay, after divorce. Uh-huh. Well, I, I was, I'm looking here at, uh, uh, it, it talks about stumbling ver- blocks or adversity. Well, probably, I was trying to think, I've been, you know, I guess I've had so much support that those things become more challenges, you know, to overcome. And the Herods didn't have stumbling blocks. <laughs> we, nothing's going to stop us. I mean, that was just kind of our bringing up. You know, you can do it. We don't do stumbling blocks. Uh-uh. <laughs> so just get up. And uh, after I, I, so I was going to go back to work. At the time, I was on the school board. I'd been elected to the school board here. And I was, though my children, I mean, I wasn't sitting home every minute. I, I was very active in the school. I've uh, been very active in the Democratic Party, holding, been counting chair and all that. During those times, I mean, you know, I was active and uh, so, uh, anyway, I, I'd been on the school board and when that happened, well, I was looking, well, there are no home service consultants anymore. <laughs> you know, that was, they went into the sales department. I mean, they incorporated those women into the sales department to go out and promote electric cooking. Anyway, so um, I, I was with the, on the school board, and uh, there they had received a grant, it, and uh, the superintendent Weldon Perrin, who was who was probably in the educational field, probably my idol. He was fabulous. And anyway, a real a real school person. But anyway, he we were talking, and he was just talking, and I said, he said, if you would go back, they are going to be, uh, the whole thrust now is counselors and elementary counselors. You go back and get your counseling, and there'd be a place for you. But prior to that, they had a, uh, well, I guess I went back before that came up. Anyway, I, I went back to school, and I was uh, I was still at home. But I, we have the Ardmore Higher Education Center here, and I don't know if you're familiar with it, but it's a consortium of. It has classes from East Central, Southeastern, and Murray, and you can get your degree here. They transfer anywhere in the state. Those teachers come to Ardmore and teach those classes. They have adjunct professors that come over here. And so you can t- you can get your degree here. I got my master's in counseling and administration without ever going on the East Central campus, and it's from East Central graduated there. 
Was it hard to go back to school later in life? No, you know, it was after I got into it, it was, um, it was really, uh, I enjoyed it more. I think I did better because it was, uh, you know, I needed to be there. I was, uh, and uh, it was something I, I just worked hard. I guess I worked harder. At OU, I was just supposed to be there and go to class, and you did this, right? I, I, but uh, after I went back, like I said, it made much better grades. I concentrated a lot better. It became, and I enjoyed it. I really did. Now, I did go, uh, I commuted to Southeastern because they wanted you on campus for one semester taking classes, and that's where I got my teaching certificate. With, with, uh, Counseling, you have to have a teaching certificate. So anyway, I was uh, became an elementary counselor and went back with the uh, school district and was with the school district for 22 years. Wow. Yeah, and was an elementary counselor. Loved that. And uh, then I went into an uh, administration, went into community education, and. I, th I think one of the things I've always enjoyed is kind of seeing a need and developing uh, something for it because, well, we had a, uh, all, all of the program, uh, my whole, we had about $250,000 through my office for programming. That was all grants. I didn't, I wasn't paid. My, my contract always said uh, pending funding. So if I didn't get the grants, didn't get the, didn't get it. So it was outreach, and, and in fact, that's kind of what we're still doing. But uh, we, at that time, there was a latch key, so we started the after-school program here, and called it Hugs, and uh, you know, for children after school. And we uh, did the uh, Even Start program. I don't know if you're familiar with that. That's it's it's a program. It's a federal program, but it's for uh, uh, for it's it's a family literacy program, and you you incorporate which I think is great. You incorporate the whole family. The parents have to be taking some classes, or the mother, okay, and she might be taking stuff to get her GED, uh, or she might be. Uh, taking an ESL, English as Second Language class. We had English Second Language, GED classes, uh, but this, the children, the babies are over here, and they, they even start, started at infants to four, and then of course, Head Start picks up at four, and this is even start, so. But the difference being even start, the parents had to be there. They had to be getting some parenting skills, uh, basic academic skills so they could get out of there and get a job which is important you know I think but we we got that implemented in the school and uh, but we did uh, I, don't know, I don't know we had you know all of the all of the driver's ed came through my office at that time because it was outside the school day so and they had to pay for it so that's why it came but uh, just a lot of like, outreach programs we uh, and I'm trying to think what the acronym stand for, but I had a grant through there called SLEAG. Uh, and it was, and now I think about now with all this uh, immigration and all, it was people that were here that did not have their green card. And if they would have to go and take so many hours of uh, English is a second language, basically, you know. After a hundred hours of uh, study, they could go and they could get the red card, you know. Now something like that, see, still needs to be done. That, that I don't know that that program's in existence now, but we had an extensive SLEAG program. The, it got hard getting their numbers and their names and their, you know, all that, but uh, so we did a lot of innovative programs through there, but most of them, and we had uh, 15 GED classes, and English is a second language. Of course, our State Department is doing away with funding for that, which is true. <laughs> I don't want to get on that, but 
you know, the people that need it most. Uh, I just always felt like that they're, you know, given a chance, these pe people could, they want to, they don't want to be down here. They, they want to come up. They do want it. And if you can help them and give them some self-confidence and, and some skills, they can make it. You know, I just, I've always felt that. But anyway. Um, well, tell me a little bit about the, the C. Sarah Foundation. All right. C. Sarah is, um, stands for crisis. I have to, uh, uh, crisis associative of uh, resource crisis uh, and resource association I think um, let's see crisis uh, CSARA C-S-A-R-A crisis support and resource association CSARA started out I guess it's been over 20 years now. It would be 21 years ago by Dr. Galoob here in town, whose daughter, he and, and a couple of other edu and a couple of educators, his daughter was in a car accident when she was in high school and went on the lunch period and had a car accident, 15. And when she came back to school, are we running out of time here? Okay. When she came back, there wasn't anything in place to handle this crisis. I mean, no, the kids were to go back to class. Okay, get back to class. And you know, this is, and it was supposed to be business as usual. And as a result of that, and, and watching kids and how they were grieving and trying to work through this, he worked with a couple of uh, Donnell Cox, and Alan Gillum at the time were both in the school system, and they developed a program for training to go in and train schools how to handle crisis. And it can be everything from, and, and so out of his sadness, and they built the, the C. Sarah Foundation, and it was C. Sarah, her name was Sarah. So it's Crisis uh, a Support and Resource Association, but her name was Sarah. and. Um, so basically it started out for training uh, for schools and they go into schools and they do do a couple of trainings a year with teachers that's what it is and you know what to you what you watch for and it it isn't just a suicide it might it might be uh, as small as a ch child's animal dying at home or uh, divorce or whatever you know uh, or someone now, of course, someone coming into the school. And so there's a setup of, you, you look at the crisis and determine what level it is, who's affected. If someone has come into the school uh, and everyone's threatened, then they're, you know, it's a bigger thing than if, if it's a child's dog and, and it's this class, maybe it's friends, you see, that are affected. So they have different levels. but. Um, it's very powerful training, and we did the training, and then we would respond like, uh, well, I think it was Kingston. Kingston seems to have several, right? They had a bus accident, and but it, it wasn't a big bus. It was someone taking the bus back. They'd been driving the bus, and the car in front stopped, and they plowed into it. The driver was hurt. The people in the car in front were killed. They were students, and there were students, one was high school, and one was middle school, and one was elementary. So the, all those friends are affected. So it's dealing with crisis, and it's wonderful. And after I was, I started working for them, and I mean, I started working out there, I'm trying to think, in 2000, I guess. And uh, we, at that time, there was, we wanted a place to do uh, interviews for abused children. So uh, we said we can do this. So we we uh, developed uh, our uh, child advocacy center here in Arbor, and that what was just the C. Sarah was just training now became the center for interviews. It's the center for exams, 
and uh, it serves five county area. Mm. I mean, we have, they have committees and the other, I mean, the committees, uh, well, organizations in each area, but they, they refer in or bring the children in. And uh, it's, I was drive, drove by there the other day, it's expanded significantly. I, mean, I think now they have uh, Donnell Cox that originally, he was on the board, well, he got off the board and became a trainer and he's going out. It was hard for the schools with the financial crisis to, to let their teachers go. They couldn't do the subs, they couldn't, you know, just subs was hard to do, money-wise. So uh, he's doing the training, but it's, of course, you know, uh, I, was, I was there five years and uh, and I felt like we really, you know, really made progress. We got the the Ab child advocacy center in place. It's we were very active in the state organization and all. And uh, uh, Sissy Burge that is there now. She worked under me, and when I hired her, I said, "I'm not going to be here for that long." <laughs> and so I really wanted to. And I've always felt that if per if I could help someone that's working with me that they could move up and, and she ended up, she's director now. But I think uh, I had gone out, was at a football game at Plainview watching my granddaughter cheer. And they came, someone came over and said, we need to go to Dixon. And they had had a, well, it was a cheerleader and she was going to the game and had a wreck. And, and I went out and that night and then was back out there the next morning at seven, you know, and I, I thought, I, I think I'm through now. I can't do this. I mean, it's it's tough. It is tough stuff, you know. And and the abused children. I mean, we. I didn't do the interviews. I mean, uh, we had someone do the interviews. But they came in. I mean, we're there. I mean, we're setting them up and helping them and doing, talking to parents. And we had it set up like a playroom. You know, they came in, I mean, non-threatening. And instead of saying, and we called it Sarah's house, so that instead of saying, well, I'm going to child advocacy, we're going to Sarah's house. I'm going to go over to Sarah's house, you know, come do the interview. But it, it's tough. It's tough duty, <laughs> you know, just seeing it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just, after that last one, I thought, I, I uh, I'm, someone else is going to have to handle some of this crisis. It's it's hard. It's uh, you know, and it begins to take over your whole psyche. Sure. <laughs> it's like the our uh, child uh, DHS child care workers, you know, in the in children's division, their burnout is like two years if they're you know, that's all they see. Mm. It's just and. You know, I see articles about they do everything they can do. They just, the system doesn't st in their form to get them out. They, they can't remove children from the home. DHS can't. It takes the police. Now, most people don't realize that, but they can't. They can recommend it, but they recommend it to the police. If they don't do it, they can't do anything about it. Man, uh, I don't know. Anyway, then <laughs> they can get into that. Well, after C. Sarah, you you went on to Ardmore Higher Education. Uh, I'm in higher ed now. And, yeah. And uh, tell me about Senior University. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, uh, I after I I thought, well, I'm gonna retire. I mean, I'm age. I can retire, you know. Uh, but I uh, after um, oh about a year, I guess, year and a half. I'm trying to think. It, I guess it was about a year, and uh, and I was doing different things and enjoying my friends and playing bridge. But that that doesn't. And I need more than that, <laughs> and a reason to get up. I think. And so, uh, I there was an uh, ad in the paper about. Uh, I had looked at different things around town, and uh, then this was for part time. Uh, it was called program coordinator for continuing ed, well, I, that's what I did. That's what I did with the school and loved it, you know, setting up programs and uh, and the, uh, that was gonna be part-time. 
Now, I'd looked at other jobs, and I thought, in getting up at 8 to 5, I think I've been there. I'm not doing that. <laughs> you don't want to do that. And this worked out perfect for me. I'm very supportive of the higher ed. And uh, this was uh, the job initially was uh, at, uh, come in at 1 and stayed till 9 on Monday and Tuesday because they needed someone there, an administrator at night. And I had been, an, I'm an administrator. And then the other gal working there is retired, and she's from uh, Votec, uh, George Ann Westfall. Well, I knew George Ann, and so she's there Wednesday, Thursday. So that works. We could exchange, and it worked out good. And then uh, Steve, and talking, uh, when I was interviewed, he said, what I'd like to do is start a program out here for people 55 and older. Okay, so. You know, we messed around with that, and then I started looking at uh, different things to offer, and and I and I've done that kind of thing before. You know, I mean, I've set up programs, and uh, then the more we looked at, the more I got into it. I thought, what we need to do is network with the other agencies, and I'd network with them for years, you know, and uh, coordinate programming. So. Uh, I can do advertising. We can use, um, well, let's see, like, well, like at the Y, one of the first thing we did, we called it Walk the Walk. Well, one of the, uh, the director at the Y would uh, come out uh, three mornings a week and we'd meet them and we'd walk. We had out by higher end, there were walks around and walk for an hour and just exercise. Then I, I was trying to promote exercise, so I, found out all of the places in town. Anyway, we, as we developed it, we decided to call it Senior University. And we sent out surveys and uh, I went to, we have coordinated with us, we have the Y, uh, we had the hospital, we've done tours there at the hospital. They've done, they've come out and done classes. They had a, uh, a heart specialist come out and do a heart class. We had one on uh, diabetes, uh, you know, different classes. I found out our our people, they don't want to hear about being sick or that. They want to have fun. <laughs> We've, but, and then I coordinated with the village, which is a retirement area center here, uh, with Main Street, Ardmore Main Street. We've taken some trips down there with the merchants uh, and gotten the trolley through Ardmore. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think. We had we have 11 different agencies that we're coordinating with. Uh, of course, our our schools, Chickasaw Nation, uh, the Chickasaw Nutrition Center. Um, I'm, I'm just trying to uh, the Goddard Center. Uh, the Goddard Center is our cultural center here. Fabulous, and so they would set up some classes, special. Uh, pottery class for senior university, and uh, so and then I would advertise. Uh, I mean, I I send, well, I send on my email. I have maybe 150. That's not a lot, but uh, we do that, and then we have about 350 on our mailing list. So the other day, the Goddard is having a uh, two hawks. I'm trying to think of it. it's John Tuharks. He's an Indian fl flautist. You call him a flautist? Mm -hmm. uh, not a flutist, a flautist. <laughs> anyway, he's going to be here. Well, I sent, I just did a little flyer and sent it, sent it out uh, for the Goddard. I mean, I'm, I'm telling them about this. You, uh, and I usually put senior university supports and then put this down here so that uh, they know what's going on in town, people, and the seniors do. Uh, and uh, we've taken, you know, we've got done a, an Eagle Watch tour. We've been to, we took a group, and the, I coordinated with our church because they were starting a senior program. And, uh, and I needed buses. So, so I'm coordinating with them, and I'm on that committee down there to help. Uh, uh, it's, they have a group called SAM, Senior Adult Ministries. So I'm working with them to help publicize and 
like I say, then we use the bu we can use the buses. I mean, they pay for them. We pay, uh, but we don't have any transportation. It's worked out great, and we've we were recognized at the state two years ago, I guess, for our, our innovative program, and then we got national recognition. When did I go? I guess it was a year ago that we went to Philadelphia and received uh, Dr. Mills, who's over our center. We went up there. And so that's nice. That's really nice to be wrecking. You know, if you put, put it together, and, uh, and that, see, that's a challenge for me is to try and let's get it going, you know, see if we can do it. And uh, we had uh, a, a, it's just, um, Dr. Mill said, you know, as he's talking about it if they, in a presentation, he said what started out is to fill some of our time, rooms that we didn't have anything in it, hire it, has become an umbrella for the whole community of things for seniors. Because, see, I'll advertise things for, like, if it's here or if it's at uh, Chickasaw Library and they're having something. I can send that out, you know, or incorporate it in my flyer or whatever. But uh, so it's worked well, and I'm, I'm loving it. I'm loving. It. I guess, I guess, just the challenge of seeing if you can do it and uh, getting it together is fun for me. Yeah. Well, don't tell this woman that she can't do something. <laughs> no. <I don't. laughs> oh, but yeah, it's uh, and you know, and I when I was with the school district. And uh, and I loved the counseling and all. I I missed when I went into administration. I missed the the kids. I mean, because you know you can and because that was right after a divorce that I go back in as a counselor and you know they just make you feel wonderful. You know I really loved that elementary counseling and they're cutting back on that now, and it's so critical. It's, oh, sure. uh, uh -huh. it's so critical. The kids that are coming to school, and you know, they're talking about not ha that. How can they think about learning when they haven't had something to eat, or you know? Mm -hmm. So anyway, but uh, and we, I went in the classroom every day. See, I, we had a, a schedule with the elementary, and I took took something in every day, whether it was self esteem or drugs or. I don't know. I had small groups. Yeah, we did, we did a great job, but we loved it. And then I was really, uh, real active in, uh, you know, in the politics and in the the school uh, uh, committees. Mm -hmm. Not just a committee, but I was president of the group here, and then uh, ended up going to. Uh, um, you know, chosen to go to the NEA convention, and we had a, a national democratic convention as a because of my teacher part. You know, so I'm a, an educator person, and I'm very disappointed with our superintendent. <laughs> I'll just throw that. In. They don't have to tell that. <laughs> but anyway, no, I just it's so critical that that we provide things for those most in need, you know. Uh, so they don't fall through the cracks. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Because uh, they, just a little bit can make a big difference. Mm -hmm. Went back to school for your master's mm -hmm. degree, your teaching certificate. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but we learn the background we need for our careers in many different places, not yeah. always in the classroom. Yeah. Um, where do you think you learned the background you needed to do the work you did? And continue to do. Yeah, well, it, it was my church and my home. Because, you know, they, like I said, the Herods didn't do anything we couldn't do. <laughs> and uh, that we were brought up that we could, you know, if it's a challenge, you just go after it and you do it. You know, you can do it. And uh, uh, also in, in the church and uh, being able, well, of course, not just the spiritual encouragement, but also people that believed in you and encouraged you. It, it just made a, and, and given the opportunity to do things. You know, I remember I'd 
you know, a junior high, maybe junior high, uh, when they were just doing programs, you know, and they'd let, you were never allowed or called on to do a program or something. Well, all of a sudden, they think you can do it, and you do it, and then you realize, yeah, you know, and then you want to do it again. And so, I think there's just a lot of just giving people a chance because if they don't, uh, many times they uh, people are just nice and and let the others do it when they haven't been asked or encouraged, I think. So, yeah, I would credit really my uh, church and home. because And my, my parents were leaders. I mean, they they were in charge. They were in charge people. And they, uh, yeah, got things done and promoted and were, uh, both of them, I, in, in uh, you know, in their different organizations, they were, they were leaders in those organizations and uh, and cared a lot about people. They, uh, I remember my dad when they were first starting the uh, children's home at Tahlequah and that was through the Methodist Church and he went, I remember him going up and and uh, frying fish for all the kids and then bringing some of them home and then buying you know, because they didn't have suitcases, he'd get them a suitcase to carry their stuff in, and and it was just a good model, you know, to see that he would do that. You know, you take care of other people on the way. You you lift, you kind of bring other people along with you. You know, it, it's uh, and still I know when they send the they have the Methodist Church now has several. Uh, missions within the church, you know, different homes. But I always, and when I give mine, I designated for Delacroix <laughs> because it was just, uh, it was special as we grew up. But, um, and then my mom always, she reached out, you know, in the community and helping people and, and going, I remember her going into uh, working with women and and they were their church people also in the black community when many people would not go over and work with them, which she would, you know. And my mom grew up in Tennessee, which is southern, I mean southern. <laughs> but I saw the help the other night, and I thought, that's, she grew up that way, you know. But, uh, but she still cared, you know, had uh, a real caring attitude. And, taking care of people so well you, you mentioned that with Herod's there's there's no <laughs> adversity uh -huh. um, well on the flip side tell me about you know key moments that you consider some of your biggest highlights okay oh, you know <laughs> biggest, highlight. biggest highlights as you look back oh gosh I don't know I'm uh You're talking about in my career, or, you know. Well, uh, just as I, I think, I think being recognized when you're working, being recognized by your uh, cohorts, you know, and like I said, I was being chosen to be, uh, I was on the national, NEA National Resolutions Committee and was chosen by the state. Well. That's quite an honor, you know. I mean, there are a lot, a lot of educators, you know, went to the National Democrat Convention. I, that was, and I, of course, that was a highlight for me because being the Democrat that I am, I just <laughs> that was very big. But uh, and uh, and at that time, and then NEA convention, and uh, but uh, and then the Oklahoma Women's Hall of Fame. I mean, what can top that? Well, speaking of, of the <laughs> Hall of Fame, uh, when you were notified that you were going to be inducted, what was going through your mind? <laughs> the, I just couldn't believe it, really. I uh, I thought of all these other people, and a lot of people in Ardmore. You know, there are a lot of people that have done so much, and uh, a lot of people do so much behind the scenes and aren't recognized, which is a shame. You know, they're, they, make, they make it happen, 
and but no I thought about that but I didn't know if it was for real because I, you weren't you probably weren't at the induction you weren't at the induction of Hall of Fame were you I, I, I was. no well okay uh, we had as I said then when they called they called on a Friday night now you know Friday night and someone calls and says you miss me <laughs> and I said oh yeah you know I was excited and I thought is this for real I mean, I knew I'd been nominated, see, I knew, because you have to get all that stuff together, you know, and help get it together. I mean, she, I knew I'd been nominated, but I don't know, and I, so I waited till Monday, <laughs> and I called. To, I said, I just wanted, I got a call, I just wanted to check. <laughs> did you tell anybody? Or? No, I didn't tell anyone. <laughs> well, I didn't know, you know. I. Uh, no, I didn't tell anybody, and I waited till Monday. <laughs> I was I was really blown away, and it's quite an honor. I feel very honored. To... Well, at the ceremony, do you remember who presented you? Yeah, well, uh, uh, Crutchfield from here, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Johnny Crutchfield, who's a senator, and we'd worked. He used to be in the school system before he became senator, and then I worked for him promoting him as senator, and then he was up there, and we worked together a lot, so I was delighted to have him as per, my presenter there. And speaking of family, I had 23, they, I said, how do we get tickets or something? Well, we'll be sending some out, and I said, okay, and she said, there'll be about 20. I said, okay, that'll cover my family. <laughs> Who else? And I said, I've got, you know, the people that wrote letters, and, uh, John Earl Thompson, who is, I'm on the Children's Shelter Board, Board of Director, and he's our director. He had also been with the school system, and so we go way back, I feel. We refer to each other as cousin. He's black, but wonderful. But anyway, I said, I gotta have these people there. So, uh, yeah, it was, but we had the one presenter, and uh, Johnny did a good job. His wife was there, too, so. Well, what does this type of honor mean to you? <laughs> you know, I was thinking about that, and I'm, I'm looking here. I, uh, I, I, don't, I think it's a challenge to maybe live up to, I mean, I, I, it's a heavy thing to say you're in the Hall of Fame, you know, and uh, you want to continue to earn it or continue to be uh, people to say, well, she, yeah, she really did deserve that. But, uh, like I say, there's so many people, when I looked at the people that went in with me, I, I just oh God, how did I get on here? But, uh, yeah, it's, um, it's awesome experience to think that you, you know, uh, in the state that you've been chosen. Quite nice. Yeah. Well, how do you feel that now people look at you as that role model? And I'm sure they have even before No, this. I don't know. And I don't know if I, I don't know. Well, I just hope I can live up to it. That's all. I, I don't, uh, like I say, there are a lot of other people. And uh, the, uh, I, I've the only time I've had someone say something about a role model. This one gal that, and in fact, she I'd hired her, and she's coming to help with. We're doing a grand families conference. Another chap, my uh, supervisor, I mean uh, Dr. Mills, said uh, we'd been to OU to um, a. Uh, conference up there, continuing aid conference, and he, we were in different rooms, and he came out and he said, I want you to check on this, and it was grand families, G-R-A-N-D families, and it's grandparents that are raising their grandchildren, mm -hmm. and he said, and he is raising his grandchildren, he and his wife got their grandchildren, one was six months and one was two, you know, that's starting over. And they're in their 60s, you know. Uh, so it's been about two years, but we're 
we, this is, will be our second Grand Families Conference this fall, and we're bringing a lot of resources, and uh, we have a couple of speakers from Oklahoma City. And uh, um, after our last conference and evaluations, one of them said, I, uh, what, what's the best thing about the conference? And they said, I found out I'm not alone. And, you know, that's just, that's pretty powerful if you can have an impact, you know, that, no, you're not. Look at all these people, you know, in there. I won't get into that, except they, uh, uh, you probably saw the statistics on that. Oklahoma is top in the nation in grandparents ready to grandchildren. Eight point seven percent of our families. And, we, and I asked him, I said, why, why haven't I heard about it? Because I started looking into it, and a lot of my uh, associates. Uh, people I'm working with out in the community, they're raising a grandchildren. I said, why didn't I know of it? And he said, it's an admission you didn't do a very good job. And so they don't talk about it. And I said, well, I think it's an admission you stepped up and played when you had to. I think it's fabulous, you know. But anyway, I didn't mean to get off on that, except uh, I do have one of, the, one of the gals that worked for me when I was with school district. Uh, is now a counselor. She went, got her counseling, and she is going to do. She, you know, works with families and children, kids, and she's going to do a section on bullying. Mm -hmm. You know, and of course that's critical. The things we're talking about aren't just for grandparents; they're for everyone. Yet last year they did a section on sexting, and that's major. That's a major problem. You know, and the kids. Uh, get uh, talked into it, and it, then it's all over the, it's all over, you know, and it's, uh, but anyway, I, I got off. Uh, Christy said, she had said, well, you know, you're my role model, and I thought, God, you know, and, and when someone says something like that, you just hope you can live up to it, you know, that you can do I'm not talking about as a professional, but as a person, you know. It's so important, important how you treat other people and how, uh, if you're there, you got to be careful how you act and how you treat people, you know. And uh, so it's hard to be a role model. <laughs> and I can hardly talk about it. My little daughter-in-law said, you, I guess you know you're the girl's role model. And I said, oh dear, don't put that on me. <laughs> but, you know, she said, no, the fact that you, uh, that you go ahead, you know, you can do and you take, the, uh, take charge of things. Now, I don't think it's much as maybe accomplishments as that, that I, I can keep on keeping on and do things. I don't know, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to try and be good, though. <laughs> so you're still very much involved in the Ardmore community. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, what are some of the boards and organizations you continue to serve on? Uh, I'm on the Children's Shelter Board. I'm on the, well, I am no longer on the museum board, but with, on the Greater Southwest Museum, but I'm on their um, uh, endowment committee, so I'm still involved with the uh, uh, museum. Uh, I'm trying to think what others. Uh, and at the church, I'm Stephen Minister at our church and uh, do that uh, piece. Um, uh, I'm trying, oh, what was it? There, there was something the other day that I just, I'm, we're doing, uh, trying to do a little more at the church. I, I used to be Way back when my children were younger, I was real involved at the church with the, uh, um, well, the Sunday school, all that, and it was director at one time of the children's division, and uh, and would like to get back doing more of that. But right now, and then I'm on Sam, which is a, um, a senior adult ministry at the church, and involved in that. And uh, what, it seems like there's some other organizations, but right now I think that's my main 
uh, affiliations. Seems like retirement is not in your vocabulary. No, <laughs> no. no. I, I said you just got to keep on, and and I, you know, I try and and I try and encourage people my age, and you know, I mean we. I think you have to keep moving because I've seen people that are quite a bit younger than I am that are old. You know, they they don't they don't get out and they don't feel like getting out and and you have to fight it. You have to keep moving and keep getting and keep and stay involved. And uh, and I've been I was thinking coming down here, been on the literacy council before here, but I'm presently not on that and I'm, and I'm active and yeah I'm still a member of the Democrat Carter County Democrat women and the retired teachers association <laughs> I mean yeah I've got different things like that but uh, I am not I'm not leading those organizations at this point which I have in the past but uh, all of them need the, you know you need uh, younger people to move in there and uh, and get more more involved, and then I've been pretty involved with the the Goddard Center. Uh, I'm not on the board there and thing, but I am working closely with them with this senior university. And then I try and work. Uh, I have uh, through senior university we have a yoga class at the Y, so I do that three days a week, and then I. In fact, I went to yoga this morning and had to go get cleaned up afterwards and then do exercise. Walk my dog every morning. So, keep aside busy. from that, I'm not. <laughs> Gotta keep busy. Uh, yes, keep busy. Yeah. Well, you, you've mentioned your parents uh, and some other folks. Uh, would you like to say anything about the people who've helped you through the years? Too many to name? Yeah, well, a lot, you know, and as you go through. Uh, I, I've written that, I was looking at that, uh, uh, I, I would say, you know, I mentioned Weldon Perrin is in the education system. Uh, Weldon was very powerful, uh, the uh, different minister. And of course, you know, as you, uh, as you work in those, in the different organizations, it, it makes all the difference to have uh, good support and people that are there. Uh, and of course, uh, I, uh, there's Rayvon Thompson. Hi, girl. She's on my committee. <laughs> She's on this grandparents, grandfamily's committee. Her husband is the one that was over the children's shelter. And she's a teacher in the Ardmore schools. But but people like that, like Rayvon, John John Earl Thompson, and the uh, Emmett Hudgens, and the, the people in the school system, you know, that uh, have gave me so much support. A gal named Pat Sperry, that isn't a counselor anymore, but uh, she was uh, when I started elementary counseling. You know, she was there. And then, and like I say, a family and having. Uh, uh, so, you know, my, my sons both were a great support when I went back. You know, when you go back to school, all of a sudden, uh, they were both in school. And when I divorced, James was in junior high and John was high school. So, you know, they were very supportive and both were, you know, at my graduation there. With, <laughs> but, uh, and, uh, but other person, like I said, Pop Porter, I don't know why his name came up, but, and then, you know, my folks, uh, the, uh, they, they've always been there, you know, they're always, uh, they're there when, when you win or lose, you know, they're there to give you support, and it makes all the difference. And you're going to have me crying here in a minute, aren't you? <laughs> no. Uh, and then my sister. Uh, my sister, uh, she went to OU. She was the first uh, woman cheerleader at OU in the 40s. And the, it was during the war. And so she was the, one of the first women cheerleaders at OU. And, our, and then my brother was a district attorney in Oklahoma County. So 
we've all been, or well, the family's been very involved in, uh, and supportive of one another. But they're, you know, like you say, too many to thank. Uh, when I was trying to think of people, you know, just to come to Oklahoma City, it was that was so hard because I had family that was going to be there. <laughs> and then the others, you know, that uh, had meant a lot just along the way. You know, and but today, and now, of course, now in this program out there, Dr. Mills, Steve, I, I worked with him when he was at Votech, and we were both just working. I mean, you know, he wasn't over me then, but uh, but he's been very supportive just in this job. It, I started out, we were talking about that, I started out Tuesday and Thursday, going from one to nine, and then right after the first of the year, another administrator in town had retired and was kind of looking so he is he told me he said what I want you to do is do senior university you can come anytime you want to come and go whenever you want to we'll pay half time just standard and they just went took last year I don't know this it all needs to be on no they took last year and figured what I'd made and divided over 12 months and just implement that program and so I still go out on Monday Tuesday morning uh, afternoons because I need I need some some scheduling or some parameters uh, but uh, you know he's given me a lot of way and he believes in me and uh, that that means that's important you know that someone thinks you can do that then you're going to be more I think if someone treats you that way you're going to even do a better job because you want to show them that they were right. <laughs> right. Well, well if, if you could give advice <laughs> to your fellow Oklahomans, what would you tell them? What would I tell them? Well, like I say, there's, you know, it's, uh, there are no obstacles, they're just opportunities and just give the best that you have. And, you know, I've, I've always said, and, and regardless uh, of the job, do the best you can. I think it's important to take time for each person that you meet during the day, whether it's a, the custodian, secretary, or the cook, or, you know, at the schools. The cooks were the ones that, that knew all the kids, you know. Take time for people and uh, give a hand to people on the way up. I mean, as, as, you're, as you're building, help someone else along the way. I tried both at C. Sarah and when I left the school district, the gals that were under me, and one of my friends said, well, you know, you made that, you gave her that job. And I said, I know, I'm so proud of that. <laughs> You know, give them an opportunity to develop their their capabilities. And I think if you can help people along the way, it makes all the difference. I think it, in Oklahoma, we should be proud to be Oklahomans, you know, and we, we should uh, stand with, you know, high, because we're a special people. I think we are, we have, and home and family, are so dear to our to the Oklahomans, and I just think, in order to succeed, that needs to be first. <laughs> You're gonna have me, okay? <laughs> it happens. It happens. <laughs> well, for for those who plan to follow in your your footsteps of seeing needs in their communities and uh -huh. helping to fill these gaps. Do you have advice for people who inspired to do the same work yeah. you did? Well, I, I think, you know, there are a lot of things out there, a lot of things uh, that I see, you know, that uh, I think, oh, I'd sure like to do that. I don't have time. I can't do that right now. There are, it's just unlimited, the opportunities there are to help in your community. You know, you just need to take a little time and look around, whether it's like they're doing this city, those... Uh, Lunches for kids on the weekend. What a what a wonderful thing to be doing. Uh, 
whether it's setting up a program to uh, read with children, you know, after school or something like that. Uh, I, I just think watch for opportunities. There's something there as you, and, and talk to people about what, you know, if we could have whatever we want to in the community or just ask, they'll tell you. They'll tell you what's needed. That's how, that's how we really started with our after school programs. And of course now they're all over the nation. I, ours were, they were started at that time. But I mean, it was, there was a time when all of a sudden that was, there was a critical need for that. And there hadn't been in the past because the parents were home. You know, and uh, and as we have uh, flex times, uh, I think people in business, you know, you know, remember the show Nine to Five, but I I think people in business need to look at ways to uh, help those employees, whether it's with childcare or or a time for exercise, you know, health. Uh, well, I'm trying to, I'm working now at the higher ed to uh, have one day a week when all the staff exercises together. And I've talked to them at the Y and they've got someone, they've got it set up for, we're going to go uh, on Fridays for a month and kind of see how it goes. But there are a lot of, there are a lot of opportunities to just be open, you know, and at first you might, someone say, oh, you can't do that. Well, then just kind of step back and go at it at a different angle, you know. But just look for opportunities and, and things, challenges. I always look for challenges, I guess. But, what does Oklahoma mean to you? <laughs> this is my place. <laughs> Uh, well, like I say, I, I think uh, Oklahoma represents a people and a varied background with our Indian culture and uh, that have come together and, uh, and work together. I, I just think uh, Oklahoma is, is a where it's a, I think it's a place where people care. They care about one another, and they'll go the extra mile for one another. And and I, I hope that we can continue to do that and not become divisive. Now whether it's in our cultural, you know, here, but you know we're all, we need to work together. And one of the committees I've been on is the. Uh, CIPASA, Citizens to Protect the Arbuckle Simpson Aquifer. And that's a real challenge for Oklahoma because we want to protect our water down here and someone across the state doesn't have any. So that's a challenge, you know, but, but surely we can come together and figure that out and, uh, and look out for each other. We, it, uh, Oklahoma, I think, uh, represents a, a state of caring. I think that was uh, very evident during the bombing that we came together and together we can do anything. You know, we, we've, got, we've got the background, we've got the roots, we have you know a uh, religious background, we have uh, family. I mean, I think those things have always been cherished in our culture here in Oklahoma. And it might be a little different than every other places, but I think family and, uh, and our roots are just mean a lot to us. And uh, I think we need to cherish that and build on it. Well, before I ask my last question, is there anything else you, <laughs> I don't know. you would like to add that I haven't asked you about well, today? Well, let me think. <laughs> okay. Uh, I mentioned... Uh, oh, I guess I'm pretty well... I'm looking to hear what... 
I, I think, like, I, of course, I mentioned family. And I think we need, that, that needs to be stressed more and more, uh, whether it's events to get family together, you know, or have more opportunities for the whole family. We didn't, my family didn't travel without family. I mean, we, we all went together. Oh, we went to some camps, you know. I think I went to campfire camp. Boy, my brother went to Boy Scout, that kind of thing. But when we took a trip, it was, you know, all together. And, uh, and, and I think we sh uh, could develop our state with that same idea into one big family, you know, that cares about each other and takes care of each other. There's so many uh, things now that really concern me that are bitter, you know, issues where people are kind of, uh, not necessarily na nationwide, kind of uh, targeting each other, picking at each other, undermining each other. And I think we just, we have to turn that around and start building together and building each other up. You know, instead of trying to tear somebody up. I, I don't understand that. I've never understood. Of course, I don't understand gossip because uh, it's it's so destructive. Uh, at the same time, as a result, I don't hear much gossip because I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> I'm not going to add to it, you know. But anyway, uh, no, I think family is... Uh, we are one large family, even the United States, and we just need to work that way together. Red and blue. I can I have trouble sometimes, but I do that. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Well when when history is written about you Oh dear, I, I saw that. What would you like for it to say? I don't know. I was looking at that. Uh, I, I just think that I would like for history to say that she cared. You know, whether it's whatever. Uh, um, it just all gets down to caring about one another and helping lift each other up. And uh, I think it's critical that we get back to care. And so, if not, if I'm known as someone that cared, that's going to be wonderful. <laughs> well, I think that speaks worlds to the work you've done here at Ardmore and continue to do. Well, thank you. I appreciate your time today. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>